Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Rappaport, and I'm working for Neurology Reviews, and we're here in Stowe, Vermont, at the 28th meeting of the Headache Cooperative of New England uh, in early March 2018. And I have two distinguished clinician scientists, both neurologists, sitting with me, and they've given a very interesting debate here on the blood-brain barrier, and does it open during a migraine attack or not? Um, it was quite an amazing debate, and we're going to try to recreate it here in just five minutes or less, which will be very difficult to do. They both take care of patients, they both take care of uh, various research activities, sometimes animals, sometimes patients. Um, and which one should go first? Which one went first? Um, In the debate, I was, I was the first. The debate, you were first. So let's try to recreate it. So, and your position is that the blood-brain barrier opens during a migraine attack, correct? That's correct. That's correct. So could you tell our viewers um, some very high-level points about why you know that it does open during an attack? Sure. Um, whether the blood brain barrier opens after a migraine attack. I'm sorry, I forgot to even mention your names. Okay. So this is Cenk Ayata, and this is Masood Ashina from the Danish Headache Center in Copenhagen. And Cenk Ayata is at Mass General uh, Harvard. And uh, now go ahead. Sorry, Thank I didn't you. mention your name. Thank you, no problem. Um, whether the blood brain barrier opens after a migraine attack has been a long lasting question. Um, there is no direct evidence, uh, and hence the debate that we held um, in this meeting. My position was that the blood brain barrier may be opened after migraine attacks, and my proposition was based on the fact um, that we and others have uh, previously shown um, that um, blood brain barrier indeed opens after cortical spreading depression, which is uh, believed to be the electrophysiological basis of migraine aura and is also um, a putative um, trigger for migraine headache. Um, we have shown using uh, both conventional uh, methods um, and electron microscopy that in animals, um, spreading depression opens the blood brain barrier. The data is uh, incontrovertible at this point. And um, others have shown in case of severe migraine attacks, like familial hemiplegic migraine, that the blood brain barrier indeed opens up um, in the cortex on the side of the affected hemisphere, um, and, um, and there's contrast extravasation um, uh, in the cortex. Based on these, um, I propose that blood brain barrier indeed opens up, and because of the fact that um, this has been clinically shown in severe migraine attacks, it's not a matter of uh, whether it opens, but it's a matter of uh, the magnitude of blood brain barrier opening. And, uh, and, and whether our conventional techniques, imaging techniques, are sufficient to detect uh, this blood brain barrier opening. And when the blood brain barrier opens, does that mean that medications that are circulating at the time can get into the brain, which is usually not possible? Yes, of course, that's, that's the million dollar question. Uh, that's why most people are interested in this question as well. Um, the blood brain barrier opening after spreading depression specifically after spreading depression, um, starts a few hours after the spreading depression and lasts about 24 hours to 36 hours or so. It provides a channel for large as well as small molecules to pass through the endothelial barrier, um, which means that if you had a small or large molecule therapeutic circulating in the blood, it would have the opportunity to now access the brain tissue um, if it wasn't normally crossing the blood brain barrier? So the answer is yes. What we don't know is to what extent this is clinically relevant. Understood. Masood, I think you take uh, the opposite side. Yes, I take the opposite side because uh, I think that uh, when we talk about the blood brain barrier, we have to remember that it should be discussed uh, in context of migraine with aura in context with migraine without aura. So since the, most of the patients that we see in the clinical practice are patients without aura, the question is that whether the blood-brain barrier opens during the attacks without aura. What my uh, colleague Jen Kayata explained to you, 
that was a corticosporine depression, uh, which opens the blood-brain barrier in, in rodents, in animal models. And he also gave some example of the uh, severe attacks of familial hemiplegic migraine that the patient was in coma, they also had some changes in their MRI uh, indicating the destruction of blood-brain barrier. Whether it take place in migraine without aura, it's a big question. So far, we don't have any evidence for that from the imaging status in humans. So, so my proposition was based basically on the human status that uh, in the common types of migraine, we didn't see these changes suggesting the uh, disruption of blood-brain barrier. Another interesting aspect is also that we didn't have during the main debate, but I can raise it now, that discussion about the drugs uh, penetrating the blood-brain barrier and acting in migraine was all right. Again, if we go back to the clinical practice, uh, we see patients with aura and we will treat them with the triptans and uh, the status also, uh, uh, clinical trials also uh, show the efficacy of the uh, anti-CGRP small molecules in this group of patients. We didn't see any differences between the patients with aura, with the history with aura and patients without history with aura. So it seems that it worked. Equally, even some status reviews suggest that there was, they were less effective actually in, in case with aura patients, the triptans and the small molecules. So uh, the question is that when the drug were administrated, if we keep thinking about that, it is possibility of the changes in the permeability several hours after the aura. So maybe the time of the administration could also uh, play a role here. So I must admit that nobody looked at that. Uh, and another uh, uh, point was that the studies that we conducted with existing methods, that we couldn't see the changes. Uh, but as in sciences, uh, you know, one method destroying something doesn't mean that it's 100 percent. We need to do more work and uh, we are actually we already finished some studies that uh, we use a different method to see whether there is any change in blood brain barrier. We use the PET imaging and we also use MRI imaging. Uh, and I think that there is a place for another discussion next year here in Stove about the, whether the blood brain barrier opens or not opens during the migraine attack. Well, it certainly sounds like we don't have a final answer. Can I ask you, even without a diagram, to briefly tell our audience what is the blood-brain barrier? Well, the blood What's it composed of? Yes, um, blood-brain barrier, for the most part, and you know, as a disclaimer, I'm not a blood-brain barrier expert per se. Um, it's um, uh, composed of, um, it, it resides in the endothelial cells of cerebrovascular um, system. Um, it is the presence of tight junctions between the endothelial cells that seals up the space and a relative lack of um, endothelial transcytosis that is actively suppressed in um, the cerebrovascular endothelium. And um, basic membrane and, uh, and parasites and astrocytic end feed provide some de degree of barrier as well, but uh, I think the tight junctions and absence of transcytosis are the principal elements. In case of spread depression, it is the transcytosis that goes up, according to our data, and, uh, and tight junctions are uh, completely sealed and, uh, and intact throughout the entire time frame. And I know there were some preventive drugs tried sometime in the past for migraine prevention that worked on tight junctions, but they didn't work in migraine. You might know about those. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not aware of those studies. Okay. Yeah. You may not be either. No, but they didn't work, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, um, okay, I guess we have some very good information, but no final answer. And we may have to resume this in a year, or maybe even sooner. Same with so. Yeah, happy to. Shank, Sue, thank you very much for giving us some good information. Anytime. Thank you.